Frank, yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the reason why I say this and emphasize this is because people see Islam in terms of the Arabic language. Yes, the Quran and the Prophet, peace be upon him, were Arab. He was Arab and it was in the Arabic language. But even at that time when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was chosen as a prophet and the message of Islam, the Quran, was relayed to him, during that time in Mecca, there were also non-Arabs like Bilal. Bilal was um, an East African who at the time was enslaved in that region of Mecca and he accepted Islam and the Muslims bought his freedom. And there was um, Shuhe uh, Suhaib al-Rumi. There was, yeah, there was Suhaib al So there was a European. Rumi, Rumi means like a Roman, meaning European. So there was, there, was a, there was a European there who accepted Islam as well. And then, and then it clearly states in the Quran definitively that this message is for the entirety of mankind. Well, I think Saladin wasn't He was Kurdish. Yeah, yeah. He was Iraqi Kurdish. He was yeah. born in Tikrit, yeah. northern Iraq. And and his his mentor, Nurdin Zingi, he was Turkic. Yeah. He was Turkic. The Sel -Jokes and Salman al Faris, yeah. he was a companion of the Prophet. He was uh, Persian. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mention him actually, thank you. He was Persian. And um, so what I'm saying, my friend, well, sorry, what's your name? Raven. Raven. Yeah. Idris. Nice Idris. Idris. What I'm saying, Raven, is, is you talk about astrology, which is fine. It's a creation from God. It's a sign from God, denoting God's majesty and glory. Yeah. However, what we believe is that um, the true understanding of God and how we should understand him and basically do what he wants us to do in terms of the way we should live our lives is through revelation given from God, which is the Quran and the sayings and the teachings of, 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 of his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. Because to us, it's, it's, a, it's an old analogy, but I'm going to say it anyway. You've got the mobile phone. Yeah. When you get this mobile phone, you get a manual with it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't overcharge it. At some cases, don't put it in water. If you put it in water, it's going to be detrimental to the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's any issues with it, go back to the mobile, to the manual, and it'll tell you how to fix the issue. Yeah. Okay. So how to fix problems and how to operate the mobile phone and get the best out of it. We're the mobile phone. The manual is the Quran. The designer of the mobile phone is God. That's the analogy. But all the buildings, all the, all the yeah. domes, yeah. they're based on mathematics, yes. which comes on uh, the proportions of the planets to uh, each other and to the moon cycle. But I ask you this you question. Know, like you see the moon in the sky, it's yeah. the same size as the sun. It aligns as well. There's a, and the movement of the nodes and how you get the eclipses, you know, the 18.618 year cycle, all this mathematics. Um, it's beautiful, and it's and it's what the temples are based on. You know, before they they had stone circles, yeah, and the movements of the planets, yeah, and the sun and the moon, yeah, you could see the backdrop of the sky. And then they started codifying this within buildings. It would close for some reason, for whatever reason, and they started using the pillars as, instead of the stones by which you could count the cycles of the node cycles and of the Jupiter cycle and the Venus cycle. This all there within the buildings, you know, the, the squaring of the circle, where they worked out the proportion, you know, just the, the circumference of the Earth being 11. If you put a square on that and pull that out, you get a diameter of 14. And you put a moon on it, on that out circle, it's the, it's the, the center of the circle. So you've got that actually identifies the diameter of the moon and the diameter of the earth that you know has been worked out these things and that's how they created the domes and the the equal area uh, of 33 years compared to the 18.618 as a radius um it it just it, it defies belief that all these this coincidence between the outer planets and the earth and the moon you know like for example if you have a full moon at spring yeah. equinox. Yeah. Nineteen years later, you'll have a full moon at spring equinox. So, so, so Allah talks about the stars and the heavens mm. as a sign of Him in terms of being the Creator. Mm. Talks about it as being um, used for navigation. Yeah. 
as used for timekeeping. That's one of the reasons why God created those those heavens. Yeah. To also to benefit mankind. Yeah, it talks about when we're on the ocean, on ships, or on land, for example, how we use the stars in terms of navigation. Uh, Islamically, we use the lunar calendar. I'm sure if you're aware or not. We use the lunar calendar, not the solar calendar. Um, so yeah, I mean, th there are things in, in and... You've got the star and the uh, Venus within the, uh, the moon as well, isn't it? Quran, no. What the, the early time Quran, I think, mentions Venus yeah. or Jupiter. I think it's Jupiter. Kokub, isn't it? Kokub, yeah. Kokub, yeah. Is in relation to Abraham and his people when they were worshipping three gods, the sun, the moon and Jupiter. That's when it mentions uh, Jupiter uh, specifically in terms of their paganism and worshipping the, the created rather than worshipping the creator. Yeah. But generally speaking, yes, Allah talks about the, the stars and the moon and whatnot in terms of the purpose, how it benefits man, yeah. for sure. And I'm going to agree with you, the, the ancients uh, were very sophisticated, yeah. and more so than some people actually believe. Oh, yeah. Very sophisticated. They were travelling and navigating. You know, there, there's yeah. more and more proof to show that people 5,000 BC and even further back, you know, probably aware of Gobekli Tepe I am. In, in Turkey. What's that, 13,000, 11,000? 9,000 BC. Nine, yeah, so 9, 10, 11,000. Just after the Ice Age. Yeah, and they were hunter-gatherers. They weren't actually settled. Well, they had symbols, you know, quite a, a language, a written language that are carved in the pillars. So I've got a friend who's just come back from there. Um, so they had what they reckon was a, a, a calendar at that time. Yeah. And it basically says they were hunter-gatherers. Because the archaeological spiel was, oh, not until mankind settled and started uh, domesticating animals and, and farming that they had then time to develop religion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in terms of building civilization. Okay. But it, it's thought that the, the, the builders of Gallipoli Tepe are actually hunter-gatherers. And if I'm right, only about literally 4% of it has been excavated. Yeah, yeah. There's more below, discovered. and a lot of it was... was, was um, was covered buried, on purpose, buried, buried, on, buried purpose. on purpose, yeah, they, say. they say. Yeah. yeah. Now, but th this is the thing. With monotheism, you can't have pictures or idols of your god. Not allowed to have it. Yeah. Now with them, Gilepli Teki, you know, in terms of those monolithic, monolithic um, um, stones and the carvings in it, and the fox and this and that and to me that looks a bit paganism it's a bit pagan they thought it was like a language huh? in ah. the same way that the chinese they use yeah uh, pictograms yeah and and the, the egyptians as well originally i think yeah. that the bird you know the hieroglyphs is still not known exactly. okay okay so you're saying it could be a written yeah form something. of text maybe which, yeah. which is like a pictograph type thing yeah. which then maybe evolved it's, i mean it's interesting we're living at a time when a lot of new discoveries are being made you know as a result of lost texts being found and translated a lot of study by last century by engineers of stone circles and seeing exactly what they were doing you know rather than thinking oh, it was some primitive kind of thing you know, it was a very mathematical based thing that they were doing that provided you know some of the like the Pythagorean triangles, you know, there were certain things that they would... Do you know what they found recently, last year on that? Uh, what's the term? Um, a math mathematical formula. Um, they said Pythagoras... Um, um, kind of like... Uh, um, produced it. Um, it wasn't, the story is he went out to Egypt, wasn't it? No, reg the, regardless, the, yeah. they found it in the cuneiform tablet going back to yeah. going back to Sumer. But that's what I mean. So he, it predates it by a thousand years. He went, the king of Samos had a, an alliance with the Egyptians because it was a time around 500-600 BC yeah. when the Egyptians needed alliances. Yeah. And the story is Pythagoras went from there. and became an initiate in one of the pyramids you know, with the, the temple halls. So right, right. The knowledge came from them, not from, from him. Well, the interesting thing is they found a cuneiform tabula with that formula. And the reason why they had that formula it was something, I don't know if it was inheritance or something, but it was about distributing land, sections of pieces of land. Mm -hmm. So they now predated it to the, to the um, it was Babylonians, Neo-Babylonians, Akkadians, I don't know. But somewhere in, 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 in ancient Iraq, yeah. I think the Babylonians. But the point is this, um, the Egyptians had a man-god and worshipped 
uh, <laughs> a lot of gods. Okay, um, the Greeks as well had their pantheon of gods. Uh, the Babylonians and whatnot had their pantheon of gods. Um, the Romans, the Greeks. Um, you want to go to what's called, you know, um, Central and South America, for example. They had the same thing. Yeah. Um, but what we're all about is one god. Yeah. When you're saying, one god. When you're saying about the planets, you know that the latest theory is that when Jupiter's going around on its orbit, it's not so much the um, the planet itself, like the object. It's actually the whole area of its orbit which has a certain frequency. Right. Um, so it's not the object anyway that is is just the fact that it's collected and represents in some way the energy of that orbital sphere around the sun. Um, Raven, I, I want to ask you a question. When you die, what do you think happens to you? It's a profound it goes question, to a isn't better it? Better place. Isn't it? <laughs> it goes yeah. To a better place. Like it. what? Do you think? Um, well, for me, well, like I said, the simple things bring joy: sharing food, sharing music. So, but what happens to you when you die? Yeah, to a well, to a place where there's more. Of, I guess it's based on a feeling, isn't it? One of feeling uh, good. That, well, you're getting good only comes from the word God, anyway, doesn't it? It's the same root. So getting it's closer to God. Yeah, it's Germanic God, yeah. To God. How do we know what God? How how how? It, it, like a deist type situation, are we just meant to go with our mood, what we feel, our own internal inclination, or does God actually play an active role, active part in guiding, in guiding us? Yeah, I think it plays an active part, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. In terms of like predestination, or is there, is, there, is there an avenue of communication between us and God? Or is, it, is he like literally, are we on strings? Or are we on strings, or is it through... Uh, because we, excuse me, we believe in prophets and messengers. What are your thoughts on that? Were you Christian before? No. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> do, you, do you have a thing about scripture? Um. What's your thoughts on scripture? I think the thing is, um, neither my parents went to church. Okay. Um, my mum thought to send me to a Sunday school, uh, but my dad wasn't very happy about it. I think that my, I remember my dad would always say, go to any place on the earth, uh, any trouble spot, and you'll find Religion. a cleric. Yeah. yeah. I think that was his attitude. And my mum had, uh, an, uh, she was, she did find, uh, something in the Christian church when she was 16 to 18, but then she was um, disillusioned for whatever reason. Do you think that affected you somehow? I guess so. Well, we never went to church except from school. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I think that I've got to go now. Okay, Raven. And I look forward to Islam, the leaders of Islam, or the, the, the um, um, what would you say, the, the voices of Islam bringing forth that green message because I think that the young would uh, also appreciate it. I agree. I think as a collective, as Muslims and as non-Muslims, we we, 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 uh, we need to look after the earth. Yeah. But I sincerely believe that because we're seeing the, the effects of it now in terms of climate change and it's either too hot or too cold and floods and, and all sorts happening. Yeah. Um, and we've got a duty and a responsibility to, to do much better. And by default, we should put more pressure on, on governments and not only that, change our own behaviours. Yeah. We've got to change our... If I may, if I may, Raven, can I give yeah. you this Quran in English? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I think I Madam has one already, yeah? Thank you awesome. Very very Likewise, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, really and we're always here or in there on okay. Sundays. Yeah, nice I'm going to show you. Thank you very much. My parents are sort of... I was brought up Christian Okay. They didn't, my father didn't believe in the church, and I believed basically myself in the truth of Christ, love, and this message of love, and I think it's been corrupted by the church uh, to control a lot of people yeah, yeah. And, and take control of lots of parts of the planet and to um, put other people down. Yeah. I sort of follow tradition. I think that we are reborn until we learn our lesson. Okay. So this will be very interesting. It is. Thank you very much. And if we meet again, we continue the conversation. 
Awesome. Thank you. Have a good day. Likewise. You're welcome. Very polite people.